The PCR test is the most commonly used test for COVID-19 worldwide. Positive tests from PCR have created a statistic of rising cases globally that serves as the premise for continued lockdowns and other measures. The PCR-derived statistic has even inspired the pharmaceutical industry to produce a vaccine in record time for worldwide distribution. So it's probably worth understanding the basics of PCR technology. Dr. Kerry Mullis received a Nobel Prize for inventing the polymerase chain reaction technique in 1993, which became a central technique in biochemistry and molecular biology. Mullis' technique works by replicating a section of DNA many times to create a polymer, which is a large molecule made up of repeated subunits of the same small molecule. These fractal megamolecules make it easier to find and study a DNA sample. Mullis didn't describe his invention as a test for a disease, only as a technique to study biological material. This is where it gets interesting. Each replication of the original molecular sample is called a cycle. The more cycles used, the less accurate the test is. According to Anthony Fauci, the NIH, the CDC, and the New York Times, PCR tests for COVID have an accuracy rating of 0% when more than 35 cycles are used. If you get a cycle threshold of 35 or more, that the chances of it being replication competent are minuscule. Mm. So that if somebody, and you know, we do, we have patients, and it's very frustrating for the patients as well as for the physicians. Somebody comes in and they repeat their PCR and it's like 37 cycle threshold. But you never, it, you almost never can culture virus yeah. from a 37 threshold cycle. So the, I think if somebody does come in with 37, 38, even 36, you got to say, you know, it's just, it's just dead nucleotides, period. Mm. So presumably, PCR tests are operating well below 35 cycles. A web search for FDA-approved PCR tests will avail to you the most widely used and widely recommended PCR test kits currently. A few sites have a convenient list of the various PCR kit manufacturers, and most of those manufacturers have links to their manual. Here are the first five manuals that I found. The Nomagen PCR test uses 39 cycles. The GK test uses 40 cycles. The InBios test uses 45 cycles, as does the Luminex Aries test. The Quest PCR test uses 50 cycles. All these test protocols are literally off the chart. The PCR tests used all over the world today are operating in the 0% accuracy range. Kerry Mullis died in August of 2019 at the age of 74, but I believe he can still shed some light on the situation. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is. Um, but it's, they... but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick, and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. What is, it, what, what is it about humanity that, 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 that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen, you know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking, you know, he doesn't know anything really about anything. And I'd say that to his face, nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy and he doesn't understand medicine and he, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people who pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans, don't, don't get me wrong, but basically there is a, there is a, there's a vast, the vast majority of them do not possess the, the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem, that's a main problem actually with science, I'd say, in this century because 
the science is being judged by people. Funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci. Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know. If Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, ask Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me, but I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But Fauci didn't want to do it. One final point to consider. The SARS-CoV-2 virus was first identified as a new virus using the PCR technique. In the U.S., Seattle's Patient Zero was diagnosed using PCR in January of 2020, and the viral genome was then mapped and published by the NIH. In other words, they used the PCR technique to conclude that the substance they found was the cause of a new disease. It doesn't tell you that you're sick, and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that.